Hey folks, season's greetings. <laughs> Christmas is coming, we're getting ready here. Um, recently, somebody gave me a stack, a massive stack of um, vintage magazines, uh, skin knuckles. Everything from the very first episode, or first publication in 1975 or 76, I think it was. And in the very first um, magazine at the back, I saw a calculation on how to figure out your engine RPM when you're traveling down the highway at 60 miles an hour, or 50 miles an hour, 45 miles an hour, whatever you want to figure out. If you know your gear ratio, your differential, crown and pinion set, and your tire size, you can calculate it. It's simple. So I tried it with my 38 Plymouth because it's interesting to me because these old cars do not have tacks, as you know, tachometers. and. Um, you always wonder what, what speeds are your engine spinning at when different traveling speeds. So in this video I go through the exercise, I use the math that they taught me in the magazine and I, I took a measurement of my car, uh, tire, and it's real simple to do. So I'll walk you through that and you can figure it out. It's uh, fun and then you can figure out if you're going to swap um, maybe tire sizes or if you're going to swap out maybe a rear end. Uh, ground and pinion set to a different size. If you have an overdrive, you can figure it out. It's all there. So here we go. I'm not a math expert, far from it, and I'm no spring chicken, and most of the math I learned in, uh, in high school and elementary school, I've already forgotten. So <laughs> let's get through this together. We're mechanics, not mathematicians. <laughs> have a good one. For this example, we're going to use my 1938 Plymouth. I took off the... Uh, the hubcap here, measuring tape, and from the ground to the center of the axle appears to be approximately, let's call it 13 and a quarter, close, ah, uh, 13 and, and an eighth of an inch. 13 and one eighth inch. Let's go do some math. All right, so this is a crude drawing of my 1938 Plymouth sedan. When I'm in third gear, I do not have overdrive. For every time the engine turns once, the output shaft, the transmission, the drive shaft is also turning once. That's a one-to-one -one gear ratio. The rear end of my car has a 411 crown and pinion gear set, which is recognized as 4.11 to one. People call it 411. When I measured, you saw my video there uh, earlier, we had uh, 13 and 1 8 inches from the center of the axle to the ground. Depending on what size tires you have, that may be different. We know that one mile is 5,280 feet and pi is 3.1416. So let's do some math here and figure out what we got. Okay, the first calculation is we're going to take this measurement. 13.125 times it by 2 which gives us 26.250. Now that is our rolling diameter. Next we need to take our rolling diameter, 26.250 times it by pi, which is 3.1416. We have a, a rolling circumference that equals 82 point four, six, seven. Next, we need to take our rolling circumference, 82.467, and divide it by 12, which equals six, eight, six point eight seven two two five. That gives us how many feet we cover per revolution of the tire. We cover 6.87225 feet on the ground, the distance, every time the tire turns once. All right, so we said that we know that a mile is 5,280 feet. So we take 5,280 divided by our feet per revolution Two two five. That gives me 
768.307 revolutions per mile. 768 revolutions of, per mile. That's the tire revolution. Next we take the tire revolution, 768.307. We times it by my rear end differential, which is 411, 4.11, equals 3157.74. That's 3,157 revolutions per minute. That's how fast my engine is turning at 60 miles per hour. So my little car here is going to be cranking out pretty good at 3157 RPM at 60 miles an hour. Now if you've got different sized tires this distance here is going to change. I happen to be running 6.0-16 bias plies. That's my measurement that I got. Different sized tires will change that. Next let's assume we want to try and figure out what our RPM of our engine will be at um, 50 or 55 miles per hour. We take this RPM 3157.74 at 60 miles per hour and uh, we want to figure out what it is at 50 miles per hour. So we put it over 50. We take 3157 multiplied by 50. So 31 57.74 times 50 and then divide that by 60. So I'm sorry if this is pretty math heavy but this is what it takes to calculate your speeds at various RPMs depending on your gear ratio. So again 60 miles per hour my engine is turning 3157 RPM at 50 miles per hour I'm turning 2,631. So you could actually do a lot of neat calculations when you're doing this. Is you could figure out maybe what your engine is doing at uh, at maximum torque. You could, if you had a torque curve of your engine, you could figure out what RPM your engine makes maximum torque, or maybe what RPM your engine makes maximum horsepower. Then you could figure out maybe what your um, what your speed would be when you're at your maximum torque or maximum horsepower. Um, so you want to change rear end. You go from a 411 to, a, I don't know, a 354 gear, maybe something out of a sedan. You change this number here to 3.54 and redo the math. This would all be different. So there, I just did the math. But a 354 rand, which is something you'd see in a coupe compared to a, mine's a sedan, so I got the 411s. 2,719 RPM at 60 miles per hour. Before I had 3,160, 157. So that's a considerable difference. However, like I said, it depends on the weight of your car, the speed you want to travel at, your torque, where it's located at. The engineers, the factory figured all this out. You can manipulate, you can do different things you want at home, and you can change your gear ratio. Another thing to consider that we, we don't know is that the different gears in my transmission, first gear and second gear, I'm not sure what the gear ratios are. Um, they don't seem to publish them. I tried to look them up, but if you had your tranny apart, you counted the gears on the, the cluster gear and the main shaft, you could figure out the gear ratios. Then you can get different RPMs of the, the output shaft, the tranny, and go into the differential. Then you can calculate different speeds and RPMs depending on what gear you're in. So like I said, it doesn't seem to be readily published, but it can be done. And you could, if you want, you could play with the numbers. You could figure out, okay, I'm going down the highway at 60 miles per hour, my 354 rear end. What happens when I drop it down into second gear? Well, clearly, you're, you're probably going to do some engine damage, over rev your engine, and blow it up. But if you really want to do the math and figure out what that RPM might be, if you knew what second gear output was of the training, you could do the math and figure it out. I don't know, maybe it goes up to 3,800 RPM and it goes boom. I don't know. Just a guess. So, anyways, there you go. There's your lesson in calculating engine RPMs at various speeds. So I hope that's useful to you guys. Uh, most of our old cars don't have tachometers in them. 
it can be a little tricky to find six volt tachometers. So if you're doing some math and you want to change tires, you want to change rear end, or you want to add overdrive to your car, you can figure out what your RPM is going to be doing. Hope that was useful. Have a good one.